<sighs> yes, carrot cake. What are you doing? But it fits my macros. I've got 13 weight loss tips that helped me lose the 45 pounds that I gained while I was pregnant amid a global pandemic. Turns out something like 46% of Americans gain an average of 29 pounds during the pandemic. So if you fall in that camp with me, you're not alone. Quick backstory, I kind of was the type of girl that would drink my weight in apple martinis and then polish it off at 2 a.m. with Whataburger. Whataburger. True story, it was close to my apartment. But I use these strategies here today to get pretty shredded for my wedding in 2015, turn pro in two federations as a natural bikini competitor and win my pro debut in 2016. And I've maintained a relatively lean physique ever since. I am a girl who loves food and I've learned over the years that you don't have to make the whole weight loss process suck. So let's get into the tips. Tip number one, master making your favorite foods for less calories. This is what the fitness influencers are talking about when they say, it's a lifestyle, guys. That's what they're saying here. No joke, there is a way to make every single food you love for less calories. You can make pizza, that's typically a thousand calories for like 300 calories if you're into that froyo life. 0% Greek yogurt. I like to use Fage because it's thick. She thick. I legit eat 20 ounces of this every night. I sprinkle some Splenda in it. Top it with some Walden Farm pancake syrup. This crap is zero calories. Put some Oreos in it, put some berries in it, nuts, whatever you like. And you've got yourself a homemade Froyo bowl. If you like ice cream, consider going from like a Ben and Jerry's or a Haagen-Dazs ice cream to trying some Halo Top ice cream. Peanut butter is one of my favorite. Chocolate chip cookie dough is another good flavor from Halo Top. I legit crushed both of these last night. I saved the bottle for you. Aww. If you like pasta or spaghetti, you can use spaghetti squash. This stuff is easier to cook than actual spaghetti. You just poke some holes in it, pop it in the microwave for six to eight minutes, flip sides and microwave it again for another six to eight minutes, cut it open, use a fork, kind of scrape it out and you've got yourself spaghetti. If you're in the salads, Boathouse Farms dressings, Cilantro avocado flavor is my favorite. I put this crap on everything. If you're into peanut butter, you can save 110 calories per serving, just switching to powdered peanut butter instead. The trick is to add a packet of Splenda or Stevia to it and just add the right amount of water to get a good consistency. My favorite is PB Fit. Tip number two, learn how to make vegetables taste good and then add them to as many meals as you want. I am the queen of making vegetables taste good and there's tons of ways to do them. One of the things I'm doing right now is I'll take broccoli and I will spray it with like whatever oil you want. And I'll sprinkle it with this whoop, whoop, black truffle sea salt. You can get some black truffle sea salt on Amazon. Pop it in the microwave, 350 for like 20 minutes. And you've got yourself some really delicious and expensive tasting broccoli. When dieting, I'll legit eat almost a whole pound of vegetables a day, which only ends up being about 150 calories. This way I feel full and I'm less likely to overeat on things that will keep me from losing Using fat. Okay, so tip number three is I just spit. Just when eating out, practice something called balance. When I go out to eat, I like to have a good time. I like to have a few drinks. I like to sample a few appetizers and I love to get dessert. What I like to do for that is I like to have my entree be more protein vegetable focused. I'll gravitate to things like chicken or cod and some vegetables. And then that way I can have a little bit more fun without going over my calories too much. So tip number four is learn from tracking calories and weighing your food. Don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. Hear me out for a second, don't click off. Now you might be thinking, but Juliana, my favorite fitness influencer said it's all about intuitive eating. Look, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the fitness influencers with actually a legitimately good physique all spent months, if not years, years, tracking their calories and weighing their food. All these people tracked calories for probably years. 
And now they say they intuitive eat. You can't bullshit me. Intuitive eating implies that you're just eating without knowing how many calories you're really consuming and you're just relying off your internal hunger and, and satiety cues. And that's not actually true. You can't erase that knowledge. You just know. Here's the goal here. Once you know what foods contain what kind of calories, you can start to kind of mix and match and have fun with your daily diet. If you've never tracked calories or weighed your food before, you likely have no clue how much you are actually consuming. It's a really good exercise to learn about what works for you. All you gotta do is go to your app store, download a free application called My Fitness Pal. You can even add me as a friend. My name is Juliana Crispo and see what I eat on a daily basis. Then head on over to Amazon and pick up a food scale. I'll link one below for like 10 bucks. Start weighing and tracking your food for a few weeks and see what works for you. Now, since we're talking about fat loss here specifically, a good ballpark to find your weight loss calories is to take your current body weight times 11, and that's gonna give you a number that you can aim for in terms of your weight loss calories on a daily basis. If you start with those calories, you'll see the weight come off pretty quickly. As a general rule, you never want to go below 1200 calories, even if the equation says to do that, because you risk losing muscle and hurting your metabolism, which hurts your ability to lose fat. So just don't go there. Tip number five, get yourself some go-tos to curb cravings. I actually recommend giving into your cravings every once in a while. My philosophy on cravings is just work the things you crave into your daily diet. That way you never ever feel deprived. If you're somebody that loves to have a glass of wine every day, figure out how to fit your glass of wine into your calorie deficit. I'm someone that likes to eat Oreos every single day. So I fit Oreos into my diet every single day. But let's pretend that you don't wanna track macros or maybe you hit your calorie deficit for the day, but you still have a craving for cake. This is where we can talk about that. So one of my favorite ways to reduce cravings, legit this whole thing of strawberries is like 180 calories. You could eat this whole thing and not really do much damage to your diet. You'd still probably make progress on your fitness goals and satisfy a big craving by eating a ton of strawberries. Another thing I do is you can take ice drinks my favorite is like the blackberry. I would pop those in the freezer for 30 minutes, take it out, and it's kind of like a slushy. Tip number six, take a break from exercise until you master your deficit first. This is what I see people do all the time. They'll buy a Peloton, they'll try all these workout classes, they'll do all these swipe workouts, and they're exercising and exercising and they're eating and they're like, what am I doing wrong? I'm exercising. They're probably still eating at maintenance calories or at surplus calories, therefore not burning any fat. So what I recommend in those instances is take one up to two weeks to just get your calorie deficit down. Now, if you're thinking, Juliana, I can't take time off from exercising, I'm gonna lose all my gains. There's been some studies on this and you can spend up to two weeks not training before you start losing gains. And that's assuming you're not on like bed rest. The reality is you don't even need exercise to lose fat, just eat in a calorie deficit. Cardio activity is just a tool to make it go faster and strength training is what gives your body shape so you don't get skinny fat. Tip number seven, take advantage of something called diet breaks. What's a diet break, Juliana? That sounds really fun. It is. So I define a diet break as a period of time where you are not eating at your deficit calories anymore, your body weight times 11. You're eating at your maintenance calories. In order to find maintenance calories, you take your current body weight times 16. That will give you a good ballpark of how many calories you need to eat on a daily basis to maintain your current weight. You want most of these additional maintenance calories to come from carbohydrates. And the reason is, is that there's a good body of research to show that increasing your carbohydrates and kind of going back up to maintenance for a few days really helps reset your hunger and fat burning hor hormones so that when you actually go back into dieting again, you can take advantage of that hormone reset. I dieted down from this to this, and then I decided to go on a diet break because I wanted to like enjoy the holidays and my birthday and all this stuff. And the diet break really worked for me. In these photos, my weight actually increased two pounds on the right because I was able to add some muscle while losing fat at my maintenance calories. Tip number eight, set a deadline and write down your why in your phone. This is all about motivation. So for me, when I started, my deadline was Christmas time. I wanted to look good for pictures. I wanted some memories. I wanted to enjoy the holidays without 
thinking too much about food. If you don't have a clear why and a deadline, I'd encourage you to get one. Tip number nine is join the gallon a day clubs. I know we see those guys at the gym with the cutoff shirts and carrying around the gallon of water and it looks kind of douchey and I get it. You don't want to be that guy. So what I do and I sit at a desk all day is I will drink two of these 64 ounce bottles of water. I'll drink one before lunch and one before dinner. And what this does for me is it makes sure that I am feeling a little bit more full when I go into lunch and dinner. Now there's a lot of benefits to drinking water. One, it's great for your skin. It makes you feel more energized. It's good for your internal organs. Just force yourself to try it. Get a cute water bottle. Now if you're like, hey Juliana, I wanna drink water but I would be peeing too much. I hear ya. But if you think about it, peeing is like a free squat. Like every time you go down, so you're getting your exercise in and you're drinking water. It's great. Tip number 10 is to monitor your sleep. What happens when you're sleepy is your hunger hormones and satiety hormones get a little bit out of whack. So you're more susceptible to overeating on the days when you're extra tired. I wear a Fitbit charge because it's pretty good at tracking sleep. I just make sure that on the days that I am sleep deprived, I know that it's not necessarily real hunger. It's more so like tired hunger. So when I have a night, where I only get like three hours of sleep because I'm up with my baby. I just know like, hey, maybe I'll drink more water today. Maybe I will eat a little bit more, but I'm just aware. Tip number 11 is to increase your NEAT. What does NEAT stand for, Juliana? Non-activity thermogenesis. That's what it stands for. Neat is just like the calories you burn when you're not exercising. You're like fidgeting, you're using your hands, you're making weird motions with your body. That stuff increases NEAT. Now how I keep track of NEAT right now is I just wear a step count. Typically if you're hitting about 10,000 steps a day, you're burning about 500 more calories than if you're at rest. Tip number 12 is pick up a hobby that uses your hands. This one's for the snackers out there. I used to be a big snacker. I try to avoid snacking too frivolously. Is that the right word for this scenario? Frivolously? I don't know. One way to do that is by picking up a hobby. You could get into video games. I don't know if that's really a productive hobby, but that would keep you occupied with your hands. You could start getting into making clothes, coloring books, gardening, playing an instrument. You could get into video editing like I am now. Pick up some kind of productive hobby that uses your hands so you have something to do when you want to snack. Tip number 13 is master your stress reducers. I am a big stress eater. I have a stressful job. I live in Silicon Valley where everyone is stressed out. I need to master how I reduce stress when I'm confronted with stress. I'll go for a walk. I'll take a bath. I would say for stress reducing, you probably wanna stay off Instagram and TikTok. That's not the best way to bring down your cortisol levels, if you know what I'm saying. That's it for this video. My channel is brand new here. I'm just getting started. So if you wanna be along with me for the journey from the very beginning, I'd love to have you here. Let's bring it in, right? You've got this. I'll see you in the next video.